Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to continue the inventory system. We're going to add some icons to the items in the UI and also display the stats in the details panel. It's going to be very simple. Uh, it's going to be in line with the rest of the game. Very simple. Under the description here, we're going to have just a, it's going to be some text. It's going to say like attack is 23 and uh, vitality is seven and all that just going to be in a line it's in one string displayed in the details panel and then the items themselves uh, will just have that white sprite be something else we'll load it based on what item is being displayed pretty simple so what I want to show you real quick is if uh, where we left off before if you have an error like this right here saying that something is not assigned uh, most likely what's happening, if it's the same error, if you followed along exactly, is we have a script execution issue. So they're fighting over what goes first and then one of them's relying on the other one. It's depending on the other one and it doesn't exist yet. So in Unity, scripts are executed in an unmeaningful way. They just get executed as they're created in that order. So we can go in and change the execution order. Say if UI event handler in this case relies on the item database to exist, well, we can make sure that the item database gets initialized before UI event handler. Just makes sense, right? So I want to do that real quick because that's what's happening. And I'm sure some of you have that issue as well. So I'm going to go to edit, go to project settings, go to script execution order. And we have a list that we can add items to. Now I want to add the items. You'll see a bunch because we have a bunch of script files throughout all these folders. I want to add, first of all, item database. Then I'm going to add, let's see, UI event handler. And I also want to add inventory controller. That's all I should need for now. Um, UI event handler is going to rely or be relied on by the inventory controller and item database is relied on by inventory controller. So that should be the, the order that works. I'm going to apply those changes. And if I were to test this again, there, the error is gone. So we have the execution order set up so that it can work. And you may run into that again. You think, well, this should be working. Why is it referencing something that doesn't exist? This might be because it doesn't exist right when it tried to reference it. All you have to do is make sure it exists beforehand. Just one of those little quirky Unity things. It's okay though, right? So we're back to where we were. We have a sword and a log potion that we can display stuff in the display panel with, in the details panel. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to do the icons for the items. So to do that, we need icons, right? Now I'm going to be using some icons that I created that you can find. If you go to game-icons.net. Now there's nearly 3,000 icons here. They're not all great, but some of them are really good. Uh, so to search through them, if you want a sword, you can come up here and type in sword and search it that way. Or you can come down here and go to uh, blade, sword, knife, and it'll give you all kinds of icons. These are free to use, however you see fit. And say I want to use uh, this sword right here, this little knife. I can come in here, I can select it, and then I can edit some stuff. I can change the colors of the background of the knife itself. I can add a shadow to it that I can make a cool color and make it glow if I wanted to in a, in a way, just like that. Or I can add a stroke to it. Well, I broke things, but I could I could add a stroke to it. It's a great it's a great site that I that I broke. And you could change the settings down here to um, use some predefined things, whatever you want. I have made a few icons. They're very simple. Obviously, it's all simple and, and it's free, and that's the idea. So I'm going to be using those. Just download the PNG and drop them into your assets folder. You can see them right here. They're not amazing, right? But they'll work for great placeholders. Maybe even you'll find a place where in your game. Uh, you can have a lot of different things shown by an icon, such as the stats or um, just other player information actions, things like that. So there's plenty of, of ways you can use these icons if you don't think they make great item icons because they're not that detailed, they're very simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my resources folder. It's gonna be in there, of course. Go to UI, 
want to create a folder in UI, it's going to be called icons. And in icons, oops, in UI, in icons, we're going to have a folder called items. Now, these, the names for these icons, they have to match the, like the name that we use for the actual item prefab, so the item slug. And as you can see, these already do. So potion underscore log, staff, and sword, they match the name of the items. So if you have uh, a slab of meat and it's called meat underscore slab, you would do that. I'm going to drag these into my items folder, just straight from where they were. I probably should have copied them, but it's fine. And then I have them in here. So I want to highlight all of them. I'm going to hit control A, to select all of them. If you want to select them individually, you can hold down control or do this and hold shift. And I'm gonna go up to texture type and I wanna choose sprite, which is used for 2D and UI. So we're doing UI stuff. So we're gonna use the sprite. I'm gonna apply the settings just as they are to all three. Now notice that creates a sprite within the actual image itself. Pretty cool. So now we can use that. What I wanna do first is just test it and line it up, make sure it works fine. So I wanna go into my UI grab the item container and I want to drop it into my content here just for testing and I'm going to go into my item container and grab the item icon and back in icons I'm going to just drag staff okay so it looks like it's cutting it off a bit so I'm going to I do want to go in and make a couple modifications I'm going to go to 2d mode and I can see what's happening it's being drawn outside of the panel that's clipping it. And that's fine. We can change that um, what panel is clipping it. It's gonna be the, co the content panel, no, the viewport. So what I wanna do, let's move the microphone over some. What I wanna do is see about just moving it over some. Um, see, how can we do that with this being vertical layout? We can do some padding maybe on the left, like three. Oh, that's too much. Two. And then on the top, maybe two as well. One's fine. That should be okay. We can make them line up that way. And just to check if I were to duplicate these by hitting Control D, uh, they do just stack on top of each other, which, which is good. So delete those. I want to select my item container and go to Apply to apply those changes to the prefab objects. And delete. Cool. So, well, actually, <laughs> I don't want, I don't want this to have that icon defined just in case we have an error, but we don't have an icon. I don't want them to see some different icon that would make any sense. So I'm just going to make this none. We can make it, if you wanted to, you could just make it what, you can make it something else. If I go back to UI and I go to the icon, I'll just make it a sprite just like that. So now what I need is I need to reference the icon in the resources folder and then assign it to that sprite based on the kind of item that we're, that we're displaying. So go into Visual Studio. I've got a bunch of stuff up here and I don't know what I changed there that's, that needs to be saved. Um, gosh, I'm just going to close all this. What do I need open? We're working in inventory UI item. So I'm going to see if I can just close all but this and get it cleaned up that way. So now when I'm doing set item, I am going to assign the values to the objects, right? So I also need, you know, let's do it a different way. I want to assign these values when they're created. So let's go ahead and actually as a prefab, I'm going to create a public field, so I'm going to assign this in the inspector, and I want to call it, see, it's the text component, so I'm going to, it's going to be text. I'm going to call it item text. And then also for the icon, public image, item icon, or item image makes more sense. So what I'll do now is I'll assign that in the inspector, but first I'll go ahead and set this up. So we're grabbing the component directly, so I can do item text dot text is equal to item dot item name. That looks better, right? A little more efficient. Item image dot sprite. 
was grabbing the sprite property of the actual image component. And we're going to assign the sprite property to be whatever that we get from the the item. So it's going to be item dot uh, item icon. No, this is not an icon assigned to the item. Hmm. Maybe there should be when we build it. Now we'll just do it this way. We'll just load it from the resources folder uh, right here whenever we set up the item values. Just keep it simple. So I'm going to do a resources dot load. And I'm going to be loading in a sprite. Looking for a sprite object. The images that we have in the resources folder within icons just happen to be sprites. So I'm going to go through UI. And I believe I call it icons and items. And then I'm going to go and grab the one that matches the item dot object slug. Okay, so whatever item that this inventory UI item component represents, it's going to grab the slug of that item, go into our items icons folder and find the icon that matches it. So in this case, if I were to go to my items, potion log, staff, and sword, it should work, right? That's the idea. It should work. So let's find out. Okay, so that we have it. Uh, we have a sword with an icon and a log potion with an icon. They load right in. No issues there. That's pretty great. So if I were to add more items, it'd be pretty simple. Let's go ahead and uh, add the stats over here. I don't want to worry, uh, really make items right now. <laughs> I want to get some stuff done. So we're going to add some stats. So when I click on sword, it'll show the stats, right? But did you notice that one thing I don't like is I know you notice this is without anything being there, the panel's still there and it has this placeholder text and stuff. And that's not good, right? So let's go ahead and get rid of this. If there's nothing there and then toggle it back on if there is something there. So we can do that pretty easily. If we were to go into... Uh, let's say, let's go to our inventory. Maybe it's in details we could do it. And the actual panel itself. I don't like how this is set up, but maybe we can change some stuff in the future. Um, if there's not something there, we want it to be equal to nothing, right? We want, want the item on this details panel to be null. So we know that if we use it, it goes away. So first of all, let's do item, in that case, is equal to null. Okay, so we're going to null out the item once this is uh, used. And that's fine. And also once it's used, since we know the item is null, why don't we just set this to be uh, deactivated? So I can do a transform dot set active. Oh, not transform. Sorry. A game object dot set active. Come on now. Dot set active and set it to false. So it's going to deactivate the panel whenever we use an item, which is good if we want. And I want to activate it whenever we set an item. So the same way, do a game object dot set active and set it to true. So whenever we set an item, it's going to become true. Cool. And at start, there's not going to be an item displayed at start. So after or before, so after we set up all this information, Let's go ahead and deactivate the panel. So I'm going to do another game object dot set active and set it to false. Now you may want to set up an actual method on these panels or actually have a component that handles toggling these panels. So you can actually throw in some sound effects or whatever you want to do whenever you toggle them on and off. So you can have like one component that handles this. It finds what menu is active and it deactivates it or it finds what menu is deactivated and it activates it or whatever. And when it does that, it can play a sound effect or pause the game or whatever. But currently we're just doing it all throughout our code. But you could easily make one component that handles all this and just attach it to your other UI elements. But uh, this is gonna work for us. So that should handle that for us. So if I were to now play at start, it should disable that panel deactivate it so it's gone you can see the background there that's fine though then I click on an item and it brings it up and says sword let's say I equip that item did we get an error no 
So the sword is equipped and the panel went away. I could bring it back by doing that. That was a very simple fix. So that's good. Um, also, I want to go ahead and go to my inventory panel. What I'm going to do is, you know, I'm just going to get rid of the image. Don't need the image. They're going to act as two different panels, but they're actually together. So now if I do this, it's just that, and there that is, right? That's cool. That's fine. So now what I said was next is we're going to do the stats. But in fact, we're going to hold off on the stats for the next video because that took a bit longer than I anticipated. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and lay out the stats. It's going to be a very nice and easy video. We're going to just do some simple stuff before we get on to some other, you know, probably <laughs> very complex multiple episode things. Uh, so it's nice to take a little break and do some easy things before we get into some more some more dirty stuff. So guys, if you have any questions, and I'm sure you do, right? Everybody asks questions in the comments all the time. And just like before when I was making videos and you know, before we had that, that pause, we had a place where we could have questions and answers and we could post stuff and all that. And it was gogamegrind.com. And before that it was forgeunity.com. Well, they, uh, game, gogamegrind.com went away because I went away. And I haven't really talked about what happened with me then. Um, some of you know because I've talked to you in private, but it's 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 not been a good time for me. And it's not that I was just not wanting to do this. I, I really want to do this. I enjoy doing this. I just have some stuff going on. And this has been, lately it's been a great escape for me to to really invest a lot of time into this. I have put a lot of time into Game Grind, into working with you guys. Maybe not... If you don't realize it, then you've not been a part of what I've been doing. But I that's what GoGameGround.com is for now. Is So if you have questions or you need to get in touch with me, you can come to GoGameGround.com, make an account, and on questions, what you can do is just sign in and ask a question, right? If you have an issue, if you're stuck, you can just go ask a question. All you got to do is go to register an account. It's free. There's no charge or anything. It's very simple to do. And just go ahead and ask a question here and I or someone else will be able to get to you and help you. This will make it where you can actually get in touch with me or someone else that may know something directly. But like I was saying, this has been something that I've been pouring myself into. You may have noticed that I've had more videos lately than ever. <laughs> it's been three in just a few days. It's crazy. And about to be four. Um, then five, it's just going to keep going because I'm enjoying doing this and I need an escape. So it's, it's great that you guys are enjoying the videos and it's great that I can actually do this and, and get away from some stuff. So uh, I just want to say that I appreciate everything you guys have said. It, it's the, the kind words have been very nice and I'm glad you're liking the new videos. I'm glad you want more and I hope that you enjoy what I'm doing. And that's going to be it. Uh, if you are on Facebook, be sure to go to Facebook and like Game Grind. There's a link in the description. You can keep up with me, some some updates on things. Uh, and you can see what's happening, what I'm getting into, and what's coming next on Game Grind. And again, go GameGrind.com. Support the channel through Patreon. You can get access to the exclusive Discord server. Boy, we've got about 20-something people that just hang out and talk. It's pretty cool. And uh, that's about it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.